Good morning. Today we finished the book of Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 6 through 8. And uh, chapter 6, uh, you know, we got some of the same descriptors, you know, that the man uses for the woman in chapter 6 as he as he did earlier. But um, chapter 6 begins with, uh, with the friends speaking, the first verse. Where is your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where... Has your beloved turned that we may seek him with you? She's, you know, looking for the the, the, the groom. And and the people are going to help. You know, where is he gone? And her response, he's gone down to his garden, to the bed of spices, to the pasture of his flock. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. There is again that statement, profession of, of love for each other. I am his, he is mine. You know, and and uh and then verse 4, you know, we, we have him again speaking with these words, you are as beautiful as Tizra, whatever Tizra is. I don't know. Um, it's, a, you know, one of the, uh, a city is somewhere in, in the northern kingdom of, of Israel. Um, but evidently, you know, quite a delightful city that you would want to go to. But anyway, you are as beautiful that way, as comely as Jerusalem. Uh, as terrible as an army with banners. I don't know, understand that part, but, and then turn your eyes away from me for they overwhelm me. You know, your, your beauty overwhelms me. You know, it's just, I, you know, that. And then again, your hair is like this flock of goats moving down the slopes. Your teeth are like the flock of ewes. And <clears throat> I don't think we'd get too far today using flattery like that, you know, you, you know, uh, on someone that we are courting. But, um, you know, I guess we just got to bear with it. And, and in some ways, you know, if we think about this as God speaking with his people, Israel, um, you know, you are the sheep of my fold. You know, I am the good shepherd, uh, you know, and, you know, so this, this imagery that way, you know, makes a little bit more sense if we think about it, you know, in that aspect. But it, I, I really truly believe it's both, you know, that Solomon talking about his bride you know she's more beautiful than all the maidens more fair than anything else but also of God and his love for the Israelites you know and you know your teeth are like flocks of ewes that have come up and all of them bear twins and not one is bereaved you know and and again that your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate I mean you know a pomegranate um, you know, when they're ripe, they're a red fruit. So your, you know, your cheeks are rosy and red. I mean, you know, you can kind of make a little bit more sense of that, you know. And my dove, my darling, is a perfect one, the only one, the darling of his mother, flawless to her that bore her. I mean, flawless to her mother. I mean, you know, we look at our children and, and we see their faults. We see this, but, but, you know, we are proud of them. We, we are cheerleading for them. And so here this, you know, she is flawless to her mother. I mean, she is the, you know, it's like saying, you're the apple of my eye. You know, you're the one, one that way. And, and then verse 10 again, in my Bible, is in quotations, it, it's again the friends speaking instead of the woman. Who is this that looks forth like the dawn, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? I mean, so it's, you're kind of repeating something earlier, but yet the friends are, are asking that. And then verse 11, you know, is again the, the male voice. I went down to the nut orchard to look at the blossoms, to see whether the vines had budded, you know, and uh, again, you know, just, you know, he's, he's gone to see his bride. He's gone to see his betrothed and, and looking at her that way. And then verse 13 again is the friend speaking, Return, O Shulamite. I, you know, Shulamite, I don't know what that means, you know, and, but, but it's return, you know, Shulamite. Maybe it's a descriptor of like saying he's a Norwegian. I, I, I don't know, whichever. But return that we may look upon you. And, and then the male voice. So why would you want to look upon that the Shulamite as upon a dance before two armies? And, you know, and then the man goes on in chapter four, how graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden. Your rounded thighs are like jewels, you know, and describing her beauty again, 
And, you know, some of it is pretty, you know, I mean, your navel is like a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a heap of heap of wheat surrounded by lilies. I mean, strange deal. And your, your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck like an ivory tower. I mean, an ivory tower, you think of something that's tall. I mean, you know, the big old long neck. I mean, I, you know, it. But anyway, beauty. And, and it's beauty in the eye of the beholder. And this man is professing his his love and his admiration for his betrothed. And, you know, earlier we you know, talked about, you know, Solomon's wedding back in chapter 3. But again, you know, it, it's kind of the, this could be a part of the wedding vows, the profession of all of the love that is there and the, um, the attraction of one to the other. Verse 6, how fair and pleasant you are, O loved one, delectable maiden. You are stately as a palm tree, you know. And, you know, so it, it's again, you know, he's just, he's enamored with her. And, um, you know, he's, he just professes, professes his love and his desire over and over again. And then verse 10, it's the, the woman talking again. I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved. Let us go to the fields. Let us lodge in the village. Let us go to the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded, you know, and let's, let's go. Let's go on this journey together and let's be together, spend time together, get to know each other better and, and all of that. Um, there I will give you my love, and the mandrake gives forth favorites, and our doors will be choice fruits, new as well as old. And and it, it, it this is one of those books that is, is I mean, I, I definitely won't, you know, use it as a lesson in confirmation teaching with the kids and stuff too much. You know, that you wouldn't do that. But but it's it's so many ways. Uh, you know, when you, you you think about your love, your desire, your feeling of completeness, maybe I should say, when you you know with your life partner, um, and, and and this is you know God too choosing His people Israel, and not only His people Israel, but you and me. I mean, He has chosen us to be His people, and. And his profession of love is is made known best in Jesus Christ our Lord. We all know that. But, and so it, it's, um, in a way, as we read this and, and as I talk about it, you know, it's kind of um, one of those touchy, touchy subjects a little bit that we you know, don't deal with an awful lot. Um, and then verse 8, or chapter 8, you know, the, the woman is speaking, you know, uh, Oh, let you were a brother to me, you know, and, and if I met you outside and, and it's, you know, he's not a brother, but her brothers approve. And, um, I, I know you and I, I love you. I'm attracted to you and you know, that all of those different things that way. Oh, that, and then again here, oh, that his left hand was under my head and his right hand embraced me, you know, a, a hug, you know, this is, you know, you know, a, a hug is is one of those things that that feeds both person. You know, you don't just give a hug; you also receive a hug, and you know, it's it's a blessing that way of touching and and holding. And um, verse five again is is the friends. Who is that coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved, under you know, and you know they're they're seeing this man and this woman coming together and. You know, and they're going to profess her as being the fairest among all maidens and everything that way too. But, um, but verse, the second half of verse 5 seems to be the woman speaking. Under the apple tree I awakened you. There your mother was in labor. It, or it is, you know, it, it's, I, I kind of get confused sometimes as to trying to think, you know, who's who's speaking this part in, in everything. And, and some Bibles will have that kind of written in them in the margins and, and um uh, but but it's you know and, and we need to remember that we're, we're reading it that way that it, that it is you know it, it's written as a as a script you know it would be written written as a play or as a movie that we could watch and see 
Um, and the f friends in verse eight, we have a little sister. She has no breast, but we'll do, you know, and we'll, she is spoken for, but you know, they're watching out for her, caring for her and, and going on that way. And verse 10 again is, is the woman professing, um, love and, you know, Sol Solomon has built a vineyard and he has entrusted it to his keepers and, my vineyard is for myself, O Solomon, that you may have. You know, and so it, it, it's it's this profession of love, extolling each other's beauty and and, and all of that. And um, you know, the last two verses again um, are just you know the, the man saying, "Come be with me," and the woman saying, "Make haste and come to be with me that way." And and so it's one of those. It's it's a book that um, it I don't know I don't really know how to describe the book of Solomon the Song of Solomon, other than it's representative of God's love for you and for me.